Hi everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing really good. Well, I stayed up last night, didn't I, to watch Donald Trump's speech? I kind of knew he was definitely going to stand for the 24. I mean, I thought that his speech was slightly subdued. I don't know whether you actually saw his speech, anybody, but he kind of reined it in a bit. It was still a good speech, and he sort of mentioned all the things that, that the Republicans needed to hear. But it was kind of um, subdued, as if he was just slightly not allowing himself to get fully enthusiastic. I don't know if you noticed that. Because when I measure that speech against some of the ones of the previous years, there was more of a further pitch to some of the previous speeches than that one. But I don't blame him, uh, because he has been attacked relentlessly, hasn't he, by the uh, corrupt left-sided media. And so he's probably just more guarding. You see, I think he'll be different next time round in 24. I think he'll choose his words more carefully when he's compiling his speeches. I think there'll be some things that he will leave out. Whereas in previous years, he was kind of like Geronimo, gung-ho. You know, I, I'm the white guy that's going to save America. You know, General Custer. Fight anybody. I'm not scared of no one. But I don't think it can be like that next time round. I think he's got to use more diplomatic uh, skills. I still think he can say the things he needs to say about the corruption in the deep state, clearing out the swamp. I think he can say that, but maybe he could use maybe different terminology. You know, he doesn't have to keep using the same words, but people have now become accustomed, haven't they? And that's why they shout out, drain the swamp, drain the swamp. You gotta love them, haven't you? You gotta love them because they love their country. And they they do love Donald Trump. They still do. And so I don't think another Republican will feel confident about going up against him. Now I've looked at Ron DeSantis and um good looking bloke, uh beautiful wife, he's got children. He's the full package, isn't he? You'd think well he he's the one. He's the one to do it. But I think that deep down in even his heart, he will realise if he goes up against Trump, um, he's not likely to win. So I don't think it is probably a good idea to go up against him for the leader of the Republican Party. I say just let Trump have another crack at it. I mean, you wouldn't back against Trump not being the President of the United States again. I don't think it would be something that a betting man would do. He would probably leave his money on Trump. Now, if Biden decides he's going to go up against uh, Trump in the next one again, wow. I mean, it's a Rocky film, isn't it? You know, Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Trump 1, Trump 2. Um, <laughs> I can't understand how Biden can even think in his mind that he's got a chance. Unless, of course, he knows something we don't, and that is that there's some very, very powerful people, even more powerful than Trump's administration, that are going to guarantee him a victory. You just don't want cheating, though, do you? Nobody wants cheating. What happened to the spirit of fair play? and Queensby rules. You mention something like that now and they just laugh at you and think you're just a soft touch because you're playing by the rules. Because everybody else in all third world countries and not just third world countries, in established superpowers, they like to know beforehand if they've won that election. And I suppose criminally minded people are able to provide that assurance everybody keeps saying that if you support Trump you're an election denier not necessarily you can support Trump because he actually makes more but fucking sense than Biden does 
Anyway, bloody politics. And now we've got this stray missile. But even before that missile did what it did, I was aware that the anti-missile defense system in on the Ukraine border was likely to be Russian made. Uh, they certainly got a lot of weapons that are older weapons that have come from Russia. And, that, and now they're after these more modern weapons from the West and NATO. So I think they were quick to squash the rumor because if they'd have continued with blaming Russia, I think sooner or later people would have been able to prove it, scientifically prove it, track it and know exactly where it came from. And I don't think Zelensky should have really have given that interview where he was really pointing the finger at Russia. Yes, Russia was bombarding near the border and the infrastructure and all the power lines and everything else. And that's bad. That's quite terrible. But you can't blame them for a missile that went 40 to 50 miles into the border of uh, Poland. It would have been wrong to have continued down that lying path. So I'm just glad that that sense prevailed on that one. Very, very pleased, in fact, because I just didn't want that to escalate to something really serious and uh, it's not going to be a great uh, time for them is it 80% of power at the moment for them I do feel sorry for them I really do I um, just hope that that doesn't happen in my lifetime um, in the UK could do and if it does how will I cope will I have the kind of strength that those people are showing I really don't know because they're showing amazing courage, aren't they? Just feel sorry for the children. I always do feel sorry for the children. It's just never, ever fair on the children, is it? Anyway, it's just a little quick one just to sound off about Trump standing again in 24 and uh, the stray missile that landed 40 miles inside the border of Poland and NATO finally seeing sense to get the evidence that it wasn't from Russia and it wasn't deliberate that it was actually a stray anti-missile defense system gone slightly awry truth that's it just get the truths Balkan. do that every time we'll all be happy